It's our buddy Stevie D. Steve, what's up, man? Morning, guys. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me. Definitely. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Hope your family had a great holidays. Uh, Steve, I, I want to ask you about this really quickly, kind of before we get into Michigan. We talked about the Skip Bayless situation and, and the, the tweet on Twitter. And look, I, I, I'm not part of cancel culture, man. You know that. Uh, I know you aren't either. It's, it's not really something we believe in. I don't think he should be fired. But I also think there's a time and a place for everything. I kind of liken it to, you know, all of a sudden, if somebody calls you and say, hey, your wife just got in a car accident, the first thing you don't ask is how much the hospital bill is going to be. So kind of <laughs> where, where do you fall a little bit on that? I think there's a level of respect that doesn't make you soft or doesn't make you woke. It makes you professional and it makes you respectful. I think it's an important distinction. But when you hire the guy who first got famous accusing Troy Aikman of being gay 30 years That's ago. That's true. I mean, wow. I, I mean, I, you know, yeah, I mean, I, when you hire people and they, their reputations precede them, I mean, you know, um, you take on that baggage and it, it is what it is. And I, I got it. And, you know, for for Shannon, I'm a multimillionaire, but everything's racist, sharp to just stand mm. up there as if he is now the the arbiter of what that line of decency is. It just goes mm. to show why shows like yours are being created and an alternative market is is. is being clamored for because much of what we are told to, um, uh, what is it, uh, express debate or embrace debate, embrace yeah, debate, That's embrace debate. Much of that is just contrived uh, explicitly for the Twitterati mob approval talking points that no one cares about. Man, that's, uh, that's such a great answer. I agree with you 100%. All right, let's get to Michigan, Steve, because, you know, when uh, we, we had you last, we were kind of previewing, you know, how it was going to go down, what was going to have to happen. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of what we talked about actually came to fruition. What I look at, the game comes down to a couple things. It comes down to turnovers. We know that. We know that penalties are big, but the red zone. And not only the red zone late, but the red zone early. Michigan came out and threw a right hook uh, the first play of the game on an ISO for about 60 yards and then got down there and got cute. I, I feel like they lost that game within the first seven minutes, as crazy as that sounds, because TCU started to believe. Then you get the pick six and you start to think you're the better team. I agree. Uh, this was a lot like a college basketball game in the NCAA tournament. And when can one team force its tempo on the other? The mistakes that you talked about allowed TCU to force its tempo on Michigan. And let me just say, first and foremost, their, their coach is way out coached ours. Uh, when you go, I watched much of the game using the all 22 footage, you know, because the eye in the sky doesn't lie. Yep. They were just rushing four, maybe five all game long. They just disguised where those guys were coming from. Those guys might come late. And by now, our guards, our interior line is kind of committed to a, a double team or a pole. And so it's too late to adjust to their stunting. Um, you know, it's not like we had a month to look at the film and see that they might do that. <laughs> they, they, they forced us. They forced us into a lot of mistakes. So I want to make sure I give them credit first and yeah. foremost. With that said, the fact that we had the ball with a chance to win this game after we made at least a half a dozen existential mistakes in this game indicates who the more talented team was. Yeah. And if you look at if you look at we just persisted the entire first half, even though they were stunting into all those interior gaps. We still persisted with this we're more man than you arrogance and wasted an entire half. Yep. In the second half, we run the quarterback with the 4 5 40 yard dash. We start getting this the speed back on the on, on counters and out on the edges. We start running play actions off of that. And lo and behold, we put up like you know, we put up 40 points and a half and 400 yards. Imagine if we had done that the entire game. So uh, you know, Michigan made more mistakes in that game than it had the entire season. Mm. But I also think TCU gets credit for at least a portion of those mistakes. But they also made self, you know, uh, reducing errors that are inexplicable. Like, let me go from running it down your throat to Philly special at fourth yeah. and one. When Ooh. I have all these tight ends and, everything, and a running quarterback. I mean, I, I think that in the end, TCU had the eye of the tiger of being told for three weeks, you yeah. suck and you don't belong. And, and, and the pressure now that they lost a game in the Big 12 championship game and still got in, that pressure was off. I always go back to when I was a kid, and I think it was Arkansas lost a bad SEC tournament championship game to Mississippi State, got ran off the floor, and then came right back. And Nolan Richardson's like, that'll refocus our team. The pressure is off now. Comes back, and they just blitzkrieged everybody all the way to the NCAA tournament championship, right? Yeah. And I think T kind of had that MO, and I think Michigan came in already – you know, we're, well, we're going to save JJ again because it's just like playing another Big Ten team and we'll save him for Georgia next week. And it wasn't until halftime they were like, oh, bleep, we're in a real game. Throw everything out there. Mm -hmm. And and it nearly worked, but they had dug themselves too big of a hole.
Yeah, I in the era where you're allowed to push the quarterback it forward on a QB sneak at the half yard line, how you right. don't quarterback sneak it every single play, mm. I'll never understand, mm. David. Do not understand. I told my dad, I said, if they line up in shotgun on this play, because it had just gotten called back from the touchdown, already a travesty. If they line up in shotgun on this play, I'm turning the rest of the game off. And the second part of it was, if it's not a QB sneak, I'm going to want to turn the rest it's of the game off. Well, at least they lined ball. up under center, Steve. <laughs> yeah, but then we fumble the ball. I was thinking about you, buddy, during the Fiesta Bowl. Emotions were certainly high in the Cone household. And then following that loss, we get the obligatory Jim Harbaugh to the NFL news, okay, which we get every year. Despite the fact this past contract extension, he was adamant he wants to be and is going to be at the University of Michigan. And the news broke yesterday about NCAA investigations. What are your thoughts here heading into the offseason? Let me start with the latter first. You see the hat here I'm wearing? I wore it for this question. All right. Here's my response to the NCAA. F those guys. Yeah. The only Penny Hardaway. The, the only thing Jim Harbaugh should have said to them is when Will Wade stops coaching college basketball, I'll answer your questions about whether I had guys work out on Zoom in a non- Oof. In, in a non-evaluation period. How you like them apples? That's the yeah. only answer. He They're a joke. Bill Self literally ran a money laundering scheme. All right? Unbelievable. I mean, and, and he's you just won the, I just watched him cut down the nets last March. So I, I, who cares? I, I, my, here are my two NCAA rules. Don't turn your school into an academic, don't ruin the academic integrity of a university. Don't have thugs that are a menace to the community and the campus society. Other than that, I don't give a rip. All right? You're out there making a hundred million a year, a billion dollars a year from TV deals and everything. And I don't care about any of that stuff. And, you know, I mean, Bud Elliott over there at 24 seven sports has been openly talking in their recruiting coverage is about dropping bags for recruits for years. Has, has, has Tennessee, they lost anything for dropping McDonald's bags. Screw those guys. I don't care about any of that. Uh, yeah. The other thing in the NFL, I think it, the other thing just comes down to Guinevere loves Lancelot and Arthur both. Okay. Sincerely. Mm -hmm. And Michigan is Arthur. And the NFL is Lancelot. I'm sure it is difficult when you were the superior athlete to your brother. You were the better, you were the better player, Heisman Trophy finalist, first round draft pick, won playoff games with multiple NFL teams. You're in the Colts Ring of Honor. And yet your brother every Thanksgiving or Christmas drops an hour comfortable on your ass. That's, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> and so when these NFL teams come a call now, a couple of years ago, he was trying to get out of Michigan before the posse arrived. But the last two years. When the NFL, when that opportunity to, to get that, I, I get it as a dude, I understand that. But but I really think he will be the coach at Michigan, at least until J.J. McCarthy exhausts his eligibility, because I think he finally, he realized he finally has his quarterback. Next year, I think, will be the best team he's had yet. I told you guys last year at this time, we would be better this season than we were with the team yep. we just had. I'm telling you right now, next year is, on paper, in terms of talent and depth, the best Michigan team that we have had probably going back to the late 1990s. It'll be his best team overall. And the schedule looks an awful lot like this year's schedule, but with Ohio State at home. Okay, mm, so I, 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 I think this is a more serious thing after next season, particularly. And I think they'll be no lower than like preseason number two, guys. Look at, look at the teams that are going to finish in the top seven or eight of the AP poll. I think we're the only one with the starting quarterback coming back. And he's a guy that Dane Brugler, the outstanding draft analyst over at The Athletic, thinks could be the number one pick in the draft with the right kind of development. So yeah. I, I think that next year, if, if we finally take that last step, I could see it. And I'm also told, by the way, that very soon, and, and, and I don't think it, it's any coincidence that it's in the, on the heels of this NCA BS, Michigan is going to announce an NI, the mother of all NIL collectives for existing players. It'll be the new standard. Uh, for what will go for what will happen going forward that's wow. what i think is occur yeah wow. which i wow. i can't get mad at him I, i'm not a huge fan of the collective i think it goes against really what nil is sure. name image and likeness if bryce young wants to go do a, a commercial with dr, dr. pepper, pepper yeah. and fansville i'm fine that's between bryce young and dr pepper that's but you gotta do it now you gotta do it but if but yeah. if we're not gonna police guys that's i'm with you there you go if we're not gonna police guys for saying on an fbi wiretap i made a strong ass offer yep. Nothing happens. If that's the game, then mm -hmm. like I said a minute ago, F those guys. Yeah, like, but Steve. got the biggest alumni base and endowment. We'll play that game now. Yeah, I but like Steve, that. you can't work out on a Zoom during the dead period. But like you said, uh, you can yeah. drop the bag to recruits. Yeah. It's a, exactly. a hypocrisy I love, yeah, at its exactly. highest level. Bureaucracy and stupidity at its highest level. Flaming. What's up, Cody? You got something else? I want to ask an NFL question, but I want you to go first. Okay, yeah. I know we're talking about Michigan and what happened to the TCU game, but I want to, I want to get your thoughts on what we're going to see in the national championship game between Georgia and TCU. 13 and a half point spread. Steve, that's a lot of points. Can TCU pull this one out? 
I think that's way too many points. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I think Georgia's defense is not what it was a year ago, and it could not be. That's one of the yeah. three, four best defenses in the last 40, 50 years of college football. Okay. It's just now like excellent. Okay. Yeah. But excellent defense against today's college football elite offenses still is going to give up 30, 40 points. And the thing that if I was a Georgia fan, I, I'd be concerned about in this game is Max Duggan didn't play great against Michigan, made several mm. mistakes. Now, he made several big plays and throws too, but like the biggest throw of the game he made, uh, Quentin Johnson just took advantage of DJ Turner yep. Turkin taking a tackle angle and ran down the sidelines. Max Duggan can play a lot better than what he played against Michigan. Now, some of it was he was playing the best defense he was playing all year too, but there's at least that was like his C plus game. He can at mm -hmm. least get to a B minus, and I'd be a little concerned about that. TCU's outstanding tailback got hurt in the game too. So is, is he able to come back and be 100%? That's a 1,400-yard rush guy. And this Georgia team actually wants to play TCU's tempo. Like, I could see Georgia get up 28-14, 31-10, and TCU's like, all right, we're playing at our tempo. We just need another touchdown or two. It's, a, it's like a basketball game. We're just playing possessions now. And so I do think in the end Georgia will win, but I think the 13.5 points is too many points, especially that kind of an offense you're begging for a backdoor cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to ask quickly, Steve, about we saw the situation with DeMar Hamlin, the Bills' safety in the NFL this week, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that as well as the NFL not resuming the Bills and Bengals game you know, to determine the AFC seeding. Uh, what are your thoughts there? I think on the latter point, you have to go with what you're seeing and hearing on the ground from the players and the coaches that were the most directly and, and personally impacted by. All right. We're not, you know, I, I know that all these guys have Twitter accounts and even with their big muscles, sometimes they come across as snowflakes. Right. But we're still talking about the, the closest thing we have in our modern society to gladiators. And these guys see violence and, and limbs breaking all the time to see them at that stage of vulnerability with mortality staring them right all in the face. I, I just think you have to absolutely defer to what you're seeing from your players and assets on the ground when they're saying we're just too broken man to go on it's just mm -hmm. not right so on that front i think that that's that was the right call as to what precipitated this there are one of two options one that despite getting the best health care in the private sector on planet earth with the most health monitoring you could possibly have a 24-year-old with a pre-existing condition or a freak play, despite the fact it was a hit that happens 100 times every week in the NFL, just had a cardiac event, and it happens. The one in a million event, it could happen. That's a possibility. The other possibility is there are countries all over the world that have seen videos like that at sporting events for the last couple of years. And maybe it's time to start asking ourselves, has something happened or occurred or been injected into the populace in the last couple of years? That might make you think, why are we seeing a bunch of people in their prime suddenly behave and act this way? I don't know which it is, but I do know that I think it's only one of those two. And if I was the NFL PA and those were my players, I damn well want to make sure we find out which one it is. Either our screening process for cardiac events needs to dramatically be tightened up and improved because now you got J.J. Watt, remember, pulling himself out earlier this year for a cardiac issue, remember, all right? Mm -hmm. So we either need to better screen preemptively for those things, or we need to find out if there's been a change in our procedures the last couple of years that has, that has, that has been noted by numerous studies to include ad, uh, added um, uh, vulnerability to cardiac events. Yeah. Well, wow. Steve, great stuff, man. We'd love having you on, brother. We'd love to get you on again soon. Look, it's basketball season now, and guess what? Michigan's good. <laughs> surprise, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. Jawan Howard, they're not just throwing punches after the game now to other coaches. They're doing it during the game. Steve, the Steve Day Show, <laughs> we really appreciate you, buddy. Uh, tell everybody where they can find your work. I know Blaze TV, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Maybe I'll just tell everywhere where man. they can find it. Yeah, just uh, you know, look uh, at Steve Day Show, D-E-A-C-E, -E, over on, uh, on, I on iTunes and Google and Stitcher and Spotify and Amazon, get the podcast and look us up there. You better, at Steve Day Show on Twitter. Steve, thank you so much, my friend. Go blue, buddy. You bet, guys. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. YouTube, what's up? It's me, Jake Crane from Crane & Company. If you just now heard about us or you're just now finding out, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed the content. Subscribe, share the show. Remember, without you, there is no us.